Welcome back. Millions of pilgrims are now returning home after journeying to Mecca for the Hajj pilgrimage. The Hajj commemorates events in the life of Prophet Abraham. Why do Muslims consider Abraham to be such an important figure? Recently, Ilyas Ali sat down with Noman Ali Khan at the Islamic Center of Canada to talk about Abraham's legacy. Take a look. Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, is a pivotal figure in three major world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. What makes Abraham so unique, and why is he considered so important to Muslims in particular? To discuss these questions, we have with us Norman Ali Khan. He is the founder and CEO of Bayina Institute in Texas, and a frequently sought-after lecturer all around the world. Brother Norman, we're very pleased to have you. Thank you for joining I'm us. very happy to be here. Thank you. We know that Prophet Abraham is, is, is widely revered in Christianity and Judaism, but many people might not know that he, he's also a central figure in Islam. Yeah, very and, central. And, and for Muslims, uh, uh, they really, uh, we really, you know, um, have a particular affection for him. Can you tell us your, yourself personally how you relate to the Prophet Abraham? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, growing up, we learned the story of Abraham, and it's very, something very close to our hearts. Our daily prayers include Abraham in them. As we send peace and blessings upon our own messenger, we associate those peace and blessings to Abraham and say, send them upon our messenger as you sent them about upon Abraham. Mm -hmm. uh, but I really felt a personal connection to, to Abraham in a way like never before when I got to make the pilgrimage, the Hajj pilgrimage, which is obligatory upon Muslims that are capable once in their lifetime this year. Mm -hmm. So I went with my wife and it was probably the most exhilarating and experience of my life to go to this incredible gathering of millions of people, at least two, uh, some estimates say even up to four million people in one place dressed entirely the same way, you know, performing this ultimate ritual of Islam at, in the city of Mecca. And as you go, you realize how at pretty much every ritual you perform is directly tied to the legacy of Abraham, that the entire pilgrimage itself is actually a celebration of the Abrahamic legacy. And as I started doing that, I realized how closely we're supposed to be affiliated emotionally, spiritually, intellectually to the legacy of Abraham. And so it's, it's such a central part of our faith and hopefully we can have some discussion about that in this conversation. Yeah, so it seems that you know, whenever a, mu a Muslim goes there to fulfill this, this uh, obligation that they're required to do, they, they trace the steps of Abraham and his yeah. family and so they really get that sense of a connection. Yeah, so what are know, some of the rituals that they actually perform? That I mean, from the very get-go, the idea of leaving your family and going out there, mm. right? Uh, for no other sake, and sake, but no other purpose for the sake of God, is itself a commemoration of the Abrahamic legacy as he left his family mm. for the sake of God. He was expelled from his home for the sake of God. Mm -hmm. So we expel ourselves, in a sense, and go on this pilgrimage for the sake of God. The other is that, you know, Abraham built this house in our creed for the worship of one God alone in Mecca, you know, millennia ago, and made prayer as he was building this house with his son. He prayed not only that that house be populated, and at, at the time it was nothing but a desert, there was nobody there, it wasn't a city or anything. And he's building, he's making this prayer that it be turned into a thriving city and people should come here to get rewarded for coming here and get closer to God. Um, and we actually see ourselves as fulfilling that prayer. Mm -hmm. Like that entire ritual is a fulfillment of that prayer. He, as he's building the house, he also asks for a messenger that would purify the people. Now there are two things, You're, you've got a house that's supposed to purify people because it's the house for the worship of God and he asks for a messenger that will purify people, right? The two are connected, you can't purify people until you purify the house. Mm -hmm. Historically the house got corrupted, idols were placed there, it became a place for you know, hedonism and idol worship and so we see the legacy of our own prophet as cleaning up that house that was originally built by Abraham. We see the mission of our prophet as reviving the legacy of Abraham. You know, on the, and on that note, if, when Muslims feel a close connection to their own prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, then he's the one that's told, being the leader of all messengers, being the final messenger, he's told, interestingly enough, that he is to follow the legacy of Abraham. Mm. We follow our prophet, and he's told he should follow the legacy of Abraham. Ibrahim Hanifa. Quran says, follow the legacy of Abraham sincerely and wholly. So now, you know, so we go there, we perform this ritual, we're looking at the same house that he built, right, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And then we're told in our tradition that there's a special marking, there's a place where you're supposed to go and that prayer counts extra, right? It's one mark, one spot, and that's the spot where 
It's called the Station of Abraham. It's literally, that's, that's what it's called. And the purpose of it is actually to commemorate the stone in which he, on which he stood to build the house. And so you can't help but remember God through remembering the sacrifice and the building of this house and the prayer that he made for you and me to be able to do this one day. So it ties you directly to his legacy as our father in one sense. Mm -hmm. you know? So we know that, that Abraham is, is both you know, the father or the, the forefather of, Muhammad, of Prophet Muhammad in terms of uh, lineage itself, That's right, yeah. but also in terms of, uh, we're learning in terms of the religious lineage, you can say, in terms of yeah. that, 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 uh, you know, that Prophet Muhammad fulfilled or continued the mission that Abraham started. Exactly. Yeah. And, and this is so awesome and so powerful to the Muslim that obviously the name of our religion is Islam, mm -hmm. but one of its nicknames in the Quran is the legacy of Abraham. Mm or the, the, the religion of Abraham, Millat Ibrahim. Millah is used an Arabic word for religion when you have a, an emotional attachment to it. Mm. So it's the, it's the legacy of Abraham that should be loved and one should, one should have loyalty to it, one should affiliate themselves to it. Then what's beautiful as we go to that pilgrimage, you know, the famous story of Abraham, of course, is the sacrifice, mm -hmm. right? And so he is willing to sacrifice his son. His son is incredible enough that he's willing to be put to sacrifice if it's from God, that, you know, that, that the dreams must be revelation. And as they're going, they are, you know, the, the mother, daughter, uh, uh, mother uh, and father and son are going, they're each tempted by the devil to mm -hmm. stop and to not go forward with this sacrifice. This is insane. Mm -hmm. And so three times they shoo the devil away. And symbolically, he literally threw pebbles. Mm -hmm. they, the family threw pebbles to shoo them away. At the Hajj, there's a, a ceremony in which millions of people go through that same walk and as they are going, they throw pebbles at these three marked spots mm -hmm. that, that actually reminds them that as we make sacrifices, we are going to be tempted by the devil to walk away from sacrifice as Abraham himself was, and he was able to successfully shoo the temptations of the devil away. Then, even before, uh, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, if you see any footage of the, the pilgrimage from Mecca, you'll see that people are running from one end to the other, right, seven times. And this is actually... Uh, the mother of Ishmael, Hagar, when, when, she, when he, they were left in the desert by themselves and he's in the middle almost, uh, um, you know, uh, dying of dehydration, the baby. Mm. She does, she's dried up, she hasn't had anything to drink herself, she can't feed, her milk, feed him milk. She's desperately looking for water. And so she's going back and forth. Her sacrifice is celebrated. It's not just Abraham, his wife's sacrifice is celebrated. And then the baby kicks the sand and miraculously water comes out, which is actually the reason for which in the middle of a desert you have a thriving city, mm. is because there's a water supply now. And we're supposed to ritualistically even drink that water for blessings, mm. the water of Zamzam. So pretty much everything we do at that occasion, that life, that life event, is reviving the legacy and celebrating the legacy of Abraham. And at the end of it all, what do we do as cel ultimate celebration? Sacrifice an animal. Mm -hmm. So when we make our sacrifice to go to the pilgrimage, the celebration of it is sacrifice an animal. When Abraham made his ultimate sacrifice, was willing to slaughter his son, God told him that he's proven himself, and how was he supposed to celebrate passing the test? Sacrificing an animal. So that sac sacrifice is actually a, again, a celebration of the Abrahamic legacy. And finally, I want to add here, that it's not just limited to that one ritual. You know, a fifth of the world's population almost, Muslims all over the world, pray in the direction of the house that Abraham built. Mm -hmm. And how much more can you say that we are a people tied to the legacy of Abraham? Yeah, and, and I think a lot of Muslims of, uh, often see Islam and see the Prophet Muhammad's legacy as an answer to Abraham's prayers. That's correct. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us what Abraham prayed for? Because the Quran details many of his prayers and they're very beautiful. Can you yeah. what, what, why was, what was Abraham praying so for? So Abraham has many prayers in the Quran. Mm -hmm. And uh, particularly what's highlighted in his prayers, a common theme mm -hmm. among many of his prayers, is concern for the future. Mm. Okay. So he's concerned about his children, their children's children, and their children's children. And he sees that the teachings of the true faith, of belief and sacrifice for one God, may, be, may weaken over generations. So he says, رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ Master, appoint among them a messenger who is from among themselves. Raise among them a messenger from among themselves. يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ That will read your revelations to him. He'll, re he'll read upon them your miracles, your messages. وَيُزَكِّهِمْ uh, And he'll cleanse them. Or, or actually he says, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ He'll teach them the law, he'll teach them wisdom, and he will cleanse them. And so we see that fulfilled, because it, literally he, the Prophet came to cleanse the legacy 
of Abraham at that place, at that same house. And he himself, uh, uh, when we actually uh, commemorate and praise our own messenger, we actually make mention of the fact that Abraham prayed for him. That, you know, may Allah send peace upon the messenger for whom Abraham prayed for his coming. You know, and he would often refer to him as his father Abraham. As his father Ibrahim. So it's very beautiful that we see that connection between Abraham and our own faith. The other uh, interesting nuance in the Quran, Allah highlights, uh, the Quran highlights um, special places. Mm -hmm. So there are messengers that are associated with certain locations, like Mount Sinai for okay. Moses, right? And then when he talks about Mecca, he says, this entrusted house, this Wahad al Balad al Amin, this entrusted house. And that oath, when God swears by this entrusted house, meaning this beautiful city, He's actually referring to two messengers in one location. Mm -hmm. He's referring to the one who began, inaugurated this city, Abraham, and then the one who finally came and made it a legacy for the true faith until the end of times, and that is Muhammad. So He associated both of them with that city. So when we think of Mecca, we don't think of Muhammad, we think of Abraham and Muhammad. Mm -hmm. How can those of us who revere Abraham, uh, you know, learn from him and emulate him more in our daily lives, in addition to the Hajj, just more on a practical level? Sure. Mm -hmm. I think probably the most powerful legacy of Abraham is inquiry. Mm -hmm. Genuinely searching for the truth and believing that, that God will not leave you without guidance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this requires, it's a two-part thing. One, you have to have faith in God himself. And the other, you have to have faith in the fact that God will guide you if you're sincere. That is the legacy that he truly left behind. Mm. That we should not see, think of ourselves as abandoned. We should think of ourselves as in the care of God. Right? So I personally believe that the legacy of Ibrahim, or Abraham is for one to turn to God in all of their sincerity and ask him for guidance and then be willing emotionally and physically be ready to take that guidance when it comes and to be willing to do what it takes to accept it. Because you don't ask for a gift and then throw it away once it's given. Right? So that is, the, that is the, the legacy of Abraham to all human beings. And that's the beautiful thing was he built this house. He didn't say, make this a place for just those who believe in me. He said, Linnas, for all people. Make this place special for all people. Make it, it was an invitation to all of humanity. And that's why even if we're not genetically tied to Abraham, we're still calling him our father because of that legacy. He became the you know, father figure in Islam. Okay, thank you very much. It's, it's, there's so much more we can say about uh, Prophet Abraham and his legacy. So thank you very much, Brother Noman, for joining us to talk about that. I appreciate the opportunity and I hope this was beneficial to people. Okay, that was Noman Ali Khan, founder of the Bayina Institute in Texas.